Welcome to the next lecture on the course introduction to R software. You may kindly recall that in the earlier lecture we started a topic on factors. We had understood the concepts of variable, qualitative variable, quantitative variable and then it was extended to the categorical variable and then and from there we had came to the concept of factors in R. We have taken several examples to understand the basic terminologies like as label or say label, right. Be careful with the with my pronunciation on label and label, okay. Now if you try to recall we had used the command factor f a c t o r factor and this was a function which was trying to convert the numerical values into factors, okay. And then we had done some example using factor of x and then we had considered a more elaborate uh, say this format of factor command. And uh, now let us try to take some example and we try to understand more about this factor. So, in the earlier case, if you remember we had taken an example where I had a vector that was taking the values as outcome of the dice and these values were something like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, some numerical values and we had converted them into a factor. So, number 1 was getting denoted as O and E number 2 was getting denoted as TWO and remember one thing, both the things were in your control. So now in this example, I will try to play with the similar type of example and will try to show you that in case if you are working with uh, uh, some characters or a string of characters, then how you can do it and these labels or the labels they are in your control and it depends how you want to define them, okay. So now if you try to see in this example, I have simply taken a vector of some strings and this and there are 5 observation, first observation is say juice, second is juice, third is lemonade, fourth is juice and fifth here is water and these values are combined by the C operator and we are interested in finding out the factor of this vector. So I try to store this outcome in variable here x, right. And as soon as you enter here on the R console, you get here this outcome juice, juice, lemonade, juice, water. This is the same thing. This juice is coming from here. This juice is coming from here. This lemonade is coming from here. This juice is coming from here. And this water is coming from here. And it is trying to show you that there are three levels. This is here juice, lemonade and water. But now in this statement, do you observe anything new? If you try to see here, this juice, lemonade and water, these are my three characters or they are my three strings of characters which are alphabetically ordered, right. If you say here, juice comes first as it starts with J, then comes lemonade which starts with L and then comes water that starts with W. So this is what you have to observe, okay. Now I try to do the same thing over the R console and let us try to see what happens.
you can see here we get the same thing. And the screenshot of the same outcome is given over here. Right. Okay. Now, instead of uh, considering some more example, we first need to understand a basic concept that is about a small function which is called as unclass function, U N C L A W -S, S, all in small letters. What is this unclass? Actually, we are going to use it further, so it is important to, uh, to understand it first. Whenever we are trying to deal with the R software, all the data is in the form of some object. And every object in R has a class. But how to know what is the class? So, for that we use a function class C L A W -S, S all in small letters. And this class function reports what is the class of an object. Now, in case if I try to translate it in a simple language, then I would say you all know. We already have done one function in more detail recently that is called MODE mode function. And through mode, we, we wanted to have some information what is the mode of the object, whether it is numeric character or list or something like that. So, when we are trying to talk of the simple vectors, this class concept is the same concept as of the mode. That is something like it will give us whether the object is numeric, logical, character, list, matrix, array, factor or say data frame. Well, we have not done data frame up to now, but we will do it in the forthcoming lectures. So, the next thing is this, why do we need this class? Why do we need this information on the class? Well, at this level we are talking at a very elementary level, but uh, later on when you are writing a bigger program or, a, or some sensible programming you are doing and suppose you are going for the object oriented programming. Then whenever you are trying to do the object oriented programming using R, then this information of class is needed. Now, depending on the class, you have to use an appropriate function. For example, in case if the data or the object has a different class, data frame, then definitely in case if I want to print a data frame, then we have certain specific commands. And in case if this uh, object has a different class, say character, we will see later on that in order to print the string of characters, we have different types of commands. So, this information on class is very important for us to know in the object oriented programming because based on that we are going to use the appropriate function to get the required output. So, when we have a concept of class, then in case if I want to do just opposite of that one, then also I need some command. So, the opposite of class is unclass. That is U N C L A W -S, S, all in small letters. This function unclass is used to remove the class effects in a temporary way. For example, suppose I have used the class function, then obviously that will have certain effects on my programming. Now, I want to temporarily remove the the effects of class function. So, I can use the function unclass. 
and this has to be used in the bracket sign where we give the name of the variable which has to be unclassed. That means the same variable was classed, now I want to unclass it. Okay. Now, uh, in case if you want more information on the on this function unclass, I would say please use this help function to get more information and uh, we will come back to our original example which we were considering. So now, we have used this data set where I had these values juice, juice, lemonade, juice and water and we had factorized it. And how was the outcome? If you try to see here, I can show you in the earlier slide. This was here the outcome. And now I want to unclass it. As soon as you type unclass x inside the bracket, we get this output 1 1 2 1 3 and if you try to see what it is trying to do, this is simply trying to go back into the reverse direction from where we started. In the concept of factors, we had done a one to one mapping between the string of a character and the numerical values. So now in this case, we have a vector of strings of characters. These are characters, these are not numericals. Juice, juice, lemonade, juice and water, these are some words, these are not the numbers. And now I want to convert this information into a number. So if you try to see what R has done in this output, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3. What has happened that this juice has been classified as number 1. This is the code given to the word juice, number 1. And so the first value here is 1. If you try to see here 1, 1, 2, 1, 3. This is my output. And the first one is going over here. Now the next observation is again here juice. So, the code is going to be 1. This is the same code here. Then the third observation here is lemonade. And for lemonade, it has given the value 2. And similarly, fourth value here is juice and this comes over here 1. And similarly, fifth value here is water, which is denoted by here like this here 3. So, if you try to see, R has automatically given or assigned a number to each of these words, juice, lemonade and water. And as we had discussed earlier that these levels are arranged in alphabetical order. So, juice is coming at the first position, lemonade is coming at the second position and water is coming at the third position because juice starts with J, lemonade starts with L and water starts with W. So, they are in the alphabetical order and R has automatically given them the numbers in the same order starting from 1. So, juice has been given the code 1. Lemonade has been given the code 2 and water has been given the code 3. So, that is the use of so the function unclassed. Let us try to do it over the R software. So, I try to give here the same output. So, you can see here, this is my here x. So, now what you can observe here that this value here x has been stored as a factor. But by looking at 
this value, for example, if I remove each and everything here and if I give you only here x and if I ask you what is the nature of x or in the language of R, what is the class of x, whether it is numerical value or factor value or say something else, we do not know. In this case, we know because we had uh, given this value x as a factor and you can see this is the outcome here. Now, if I want to know the class, I can simply write down here class of x and you can see here this comes out to be factor and this is what we meant by class, right. Now, suppose if I want to unclass it and suppose whatever is the outcome, we try to store it say in here z vector unclass here x and the outcome here comes out to be like this. So, you can see here this juice has been given the value 1, this juice has been given the value 1 and this lemonade has been given the value here 2 and so on and this is the say this labels. Now, another interesting question comes, this x has a class factor, but now what is the class of this here z? And remember z has been obtained by using the function unclass over x. You can see here, the class of now z is integer. So, what is the moral of the story? You had converted a factor which was x into an integer which is now here an integer. Okay, so, now let us come back to our own slides and try to continue further and, and yeah, this is the screenshot of the outcome that you have just observed. Now, I try to make this example a little bit more elaborative. In this example, what we had done that we had taken the data as a strings of characters like a juice, juice, lemonade, juice and water and then we had operated the function factor on this data set. And the levels of this factor, they were automatically adjusted by or say automatically chosen by the R software. For example, you can see here in this outcome, here you can see here that uh, what are the levels that we had obtained here. And these levels were obtained as juice, lemonade and water. This choice was made automatically by the R software. And suppose I want to now change it. I do not want this thing, I do not need this thing, but I want to have some other levels depending on my need. What I do now here that now, I define my own levels and I say my levels are going to be water, juice and lemonade. Now, you can notice this is not alphabetically ordered. Earlier, it was alphabetically ordered and then we had juice, lemonade and, and water, but now I want to give it a different level according to my wish or my requirement. So, I have to simply specify here levels equal to whatever is my wish for levels which I want to give to this data set. And you can see here as soon as I give it hit on the R console, we get the same outcome. This juice, juice, lemonade, juice and water, this is given here, juice, juice, lemonade, juice and water, but this level is now here changed. These levels are now as per our requirement and just for your 
information earlier we had the labels say juice, lemonade and water this was the ordering but now this ordering is changed. So, if you want to change the order of the labels it is possible and in the same example if you want to unclass it then you get here the this type of vector and it is showing that the labels are now water, juice and lemonade. That means, water is indicating here 1, juice is indicating here 2 and lemonade is indicated by 3. Right. And if you want to know the what are the labels in this data, you can use the command labels of x and it is giving you the same outcome which is given over here. So, let us try to do this thing over the R console and can see what happens. So, if I try to give this command over here on the R console, you can see here this is my this thing and the output here is like this and if I want to unclass it outcome is like this and if I want to find out the levels of x you can see here this is the thing and the same outcome is given here as a screenshot. Now, I take another example. Suppose I want to have a factor of for a data set in an ordered way or we want to have an ordered factor. What is the difference between ordered and say unordered? Suppose I roll a dice, in the first throw I get 2, in the second throw I get say here 1 and in the third throw I get 3. So, the order is 2, 1, 3 which is trying to take care the order in which the values have been drawn. But if I say no, I am not bothered about the ordering, then I will say simply I am observing 3 values 1, 2 and 3 or say 3, 1 and 2 or 2, 1 and 3, it does not make any difference, but I am more interested only in the 3 values. So, now in case if you want to have some ordering also, then this ordering has to be defined by using a function here ordered. O R D E R E D all in small letters and inside the bracket similar to the use of factor we have to give here the data. For example, here I am trying to give the data in terms of high, high, low, medium and medium and what is the ordering that is given in the see here labels, see here low, medium and high. And suppose this data on say high income, low income and medium income is stored in say variable here income. So, you can see here we get here the same data set whatever is given over here as here, but now this labels whatever I had given here they are coming out in this format that low is smaller than medium and medium is smaller than high. And if I want to unclass this variable income, we get here the this type of thing. So, let us try to do it over the R console and see what do we obtain here. This is my here income and suppose I want to find out the class of income, this is here ordered factor it is also giving us an the class there it is ordered as well as this is factor. And suppose I try to unclass my income variable, this is giving us like this. And then in case if you want to see what is the class of this unclass income variable, so I can write down here class of unclass income, this is coming out to be integer. So, the original thing was ordered factor 
but more the class of the after unclassing it, it is integer, right. So, we come back to our slides now. So, here is the output in this form of a screenshot and now we come to the last topic of this lecture that suppose I want to convert a vector into a factor, then we have a command as dot factor. This is a function which can be used to convert a vector into a factor. For example, if I try to see this example, I am trying to take this these numerical values in, in the form of a vector assigned to s and now I want to convert this these numerical values into factor. So, I try to say here as factor x and I try to replace my here x by this here x. And now, if I try to say here x, you can see here this comes out to be a different type of thing that here these are the values, but now it is also giving us the levels. So, let us try to do it over the R screen. So, you can see here this is my here x and now suppose I try to see here this head is my here s factor as dot factor rather see here x and you can see here the outcome of here is z is this thing. Now, in case if you try to see what is the class of x this is numeric. So, this is a numerical vector. So, now uh, we stop here and this lecture we have learned some other aspects of the factor. So, now I would request you to look into this lecture in the light of the earlier lecture also. Try to do some more practice on the outcomes of factor, try to experiment with more data sets and we will see in the next lecture with some new topics. Till then, goodbye.